Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. This video is a continuation of fluid and electrolyte imbalance session with the main topic on hyponatremia. Hyponatremia, as the name defines, is decreased sodium level in the blood. As we all know, normal serum sodium level is 135 to 145 milli equivalent per liter. Hyponatremia is a condition that occurs when the serum sodium concentration falls below 135 milli equivalent per liter. Now, what is sodium? Where does it come from? And what does it do? Sodium is both an electrolyte and a mineral. It is a major cation in the extracellular fluid. Sodium is generally regulated by antidiuretic hormone, thirst, and renin angiotensin aldosterone system a loss or gain of sodium usually is accompanied by a loss or gain of water sodium does a lot of functions in the body mainly maintaining acid base balance maintaining water balance transmission of nerve impulses regulating muscle contractions it also helps to absorb and transport some of the nutrients. Sodium helps in maintaining blood pressure. How is hyponatremia caused? We can remember the main causes in four Ds. Dehydration, diuresis, brain, diarrhea. Some more causes are excessive sweating, vomiting, renal diseases, low salt diet, Hyperglycemia also leads to hyponatremia. How does it occur? In hyperglycemia, water is moved out of the cells and subsequently causing reduction of sodium levels in the blood. And hence, it is called as dilutional hyponatremia. Next is heart failure. In patients with congestive heart failure, Increased activity of arginine vasopressin is the main reason for hyponatremia. What does it do? It increases the reabsorption of free water in the renal collecting ducts, thereby increasing the blood volume, and hence the plasma sodium gets diluted. The other reason is diuretic therapy used in the management of congestive heart failure. This may also trigger hyponatremia. Next cause will be SIADH secretion. What is SIADH? Syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. It is characterized by excessive unsuppressible release of antidiuretic hormone either from posterior part of the pituitary gland or from an abnormal non-pituitary source. Hyponatemia can also be caused by wound drain. Let's look into the clinical manifestations of hyponatremia. Hyponatremia may be characterized by signs and symptoms like stupor or coma. Stupor is a state of near unconsciousness or insensibility. Other symptoms may include anorexia, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, tendon reflexes may be decreased, limb muscles may become weak orthostatic hypotension which is a form of low blood pressure while standing up from either sitting or lying position other symptoms may be stomach cramping seizure or headache all of these signs and symptoms can be grouped up and placed under the mnemonic salt loss for a very easy remembrance let's have a look on the system wise manifestations in cardiovascular system, when hyponatremia is caused by hypovolemia, it is characterized by pretty weak rapid pulse rate, hypotension, decreased central venous pressure. And when hyponatremia is caused by hypervolemia, it is characterized by rapid bounding pulse, hypertension or normal blood pressure and increased central venous pressure. Respiratory signs and symptoms may include Increased rate and depth of respiration, that is, shallow respiration. Neuromuscular and central nervous system symptoms include skeletal muscle weakness, decreased 
tendon reflexes, headache, seizure, coma. Renal symptoms may include increased urine output. Integumentary symptoms show pale skin, dry mucus, membrane. Gastrointestinal symptoms include increased motility or hyperactive bowel sounds, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramping, diarrhea. When we look into the laboratory findings, it shows decreased levels of serum osmolality, sodium level which is less than 135 milli equivalent per liter. In SIADH, it may be lower than even 100 milli equivalent per liter and also decreased urine specific gravity. How do we manage hyponatremia? It depends upon identifying and treating the underlying cause of hyponatremia like vomiting, diarrhea, brain, etc. Management of hyponatremia is as follows. When hyponatremia is related to hypovolemia, administration of isotonic fluids help in managing the condition. Example is normal saline solution that restores the volume. If hyponatremia is related to hypervolemia, then hypertonic fluids such as normal saline 3% is administered. In case of normal volemia, fluid restriction and sodium supplements will be given. The antidiuretic hormone arginine vasopressin also helps in stimulating free water excretion. Nursing management of hyponatremia includes monitoring vital signs, body weight, intake output, mental status or neurologic status, types of seizure if any, skin turgor, electrolytes level, monitoring central venous pressure and oral mucosa. The main nursing diagnosis for hyponatremia is risk for electrolyte imbalance that is hyponatremia related to diarrhea, vomiting, excessive sweating, etc. Here you go with hyponatremia under fluid and electrolyte imbalances. If you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.